Welcome to another episode of Sage Studio. Today, I am joined with Miss Tara Edwards, and she is one of our Sage Oak High School education advisors and art teachers. And today, we are going to be talking all about our high school art program. So, Tara, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. It is our pleasure. We are thrilled about the art program that you have really been a major part of developing here at Sage Oak for our Sage Oak students. I know I personally had students that took some of the art classes, loved the program. And I know that we've had several students that have gone through the program now that it's been developing over the last few years. So I can't wait to share more about the program with some of our listeners today. But before we do, I'd like to walk back a little bit and let them get to know you a little bit more. Tell us about your background in art and your background as an art teacher. Like, how did, how did you even come to teach art for Zajo? Their thing. So I went to college for art. I got my bachelor's degree in studio art with a photography emphasis and a minor in art history. But while I was in college, I took an education class just to see if I'd want to pursue a credential potentially. And I loved it so much. So I ended up, while I was getting my bachelor's degree, also getting my teaching credential. And then a couple years ago, I went back to add my career in technical education credentials so I could teach CTE art classes as well. In terms of my art background, I'm primarily a digital and analog photographer, but I also dabble in other things like graphic design and printmaking and sculpture and bookmaking and other other fun stuff. Okay, you are very talented. I'm impressed. That is a lot. I'm really you great. Probably still yeah. product. You probably still the product. I trust you. And I know that the instruction that our students are getting has been great. I've seen some of the work they've done. So that's so amazing that you have all of that talent, that you took a chance on an education class, found out, wow, I think I actually want to add this to a teaching credential. And there you are teaching art for high school students. So, so great. I love that. You mentioned that you earned a CTE certificate and are now teaching our CTE program. Tell us what CTE is, because I know that sometimes we throw that term around and then we forget to explain what CTE actually stands for. We love our, our acronyms. Um, <laughs> do. It's a teacher thing. I don't know why. We love them. So many. CTE stands for Career and Technical Education. And a CTE pathway in high school is basically just a sequence of CTE courses in a student's area of career interest. So we have our CTE art pathway. So geared towards students who are interested in pursuing creative careers. Okay, so when you say an art pathway and you're talking about these career and technical skills, these are all courses that would fit within their elective category. Is that right? Of the graduation requirements? So they, they count in the CTE category. Most of the classes also count towards BAPA. So even if a student is like, eh, I don't know about the CTE pathway, you can, you can take one of these classes to fulfill the VAPA requirement. They do count towards elective credit as well. And our intro to arts, media, and entertainment class counts as a career exploration class. So it's kind of like, as Tracy, would, Tracy King would say, feeding two birds with one scone. The elective credits, VAPA, and career exploration while... Right. That's like three birds with one scone. I mean, yeah, this is a hefty scone here. I love it. Yeah, this is a hefty scone. <laughs> so perfect. Okay, so career technical education, students that are taking these classes, they're receiving awesome art instruction. It's kind of meeting those different requirements for them. How is a CTE elective different than just a regular elective? So CTE classes, are, I would say they're more hands-on, more project-based and geared specifically towards industry-specific knowledge and skills related to the career pathway. So it's really highly relevant, and the purpose is to, to help students connect to their future career. Okay, so they're taking these classes, and not only are they learning art skills and techniques, but then they're also learning how to apply that to careers that they could potentially have or maybe degrees in college that they'd like to earn. So it really kind of connects that the dots between what you need to learn and how you can apply it. Um, so with that said, what type of classes are they learning? Are they learning a wide range of different art techniques throughout this pathway? 
Well, students can kind of pick which direction they want to go in. Uh, we start with the intro to arts, media, and entertainment class, which surveys. And for that class, it's mostly career exploration geared class with hands-on art projects along the way that correspond with the career cluster we're learning about. So we start with visual fine art careers and they do a sculpture project and then we move into uh, performing arts careers and they do like a voiceover assignment and then we jump into film careers. That's a hefty unit and they make a film and then we wrap up with animation and game design careers and they do animation project and a game design project as well so that that class really surveys all the careers and then from that point the hope is that students get an idea of what interests them the most and currently in-house we have a photography like more photography specific pathway animation and digital arts and and fine art so from that point student can say i really like photography i'm going to take photography and photoshop one and two or I think I like animation, I'm going to take animation, or I like drawing and painting, I'm going to take drawing and painting. So yeah, there's there's lots of options. But we hope to expand and bring in more classes in the future too. I love that the program is really structured to allow that exploration, right? Because it sounds like a student doesn't have to come in knowing exactly what path they want to be on or exactly the direction they're going. You've built in some of these different options for them so that as they start to learn things and as they start to acquire skills, they can start to say like, oh, okay, this is an area that I'm really interested in or yeah, I'm kind of good in this area. And like I was maybe surprised, you know, that I am a better photographer than I thought or I'm better at drawing than I thought, which is so aligned to our Sage Oak values, right? And how we personalize our courses that even in this option where we're saying, okay, yes, you're selecting this pathway, there's still some option and room for that personalization structure. So that's Absolutely. so good. Do most of your students come in with art skills? Are they great at art when they come in? Is this really just for students that are great artists? It really, it runs the gamut. So okay. hmm, some students come in and they have a little art background and some come in with no art background at all. And either way is totally fine. Our introductory classes meet you wherever you are. So like, Drawing one, we can take you from sick fear to like self-portrait with value and depth. We can meet you wherever you are and, and start building on those technical skills. A lot of times I hear like, oh, I'm not good at art. Like I'm just not a good artist or I can't draw. But drawing and other skills in art are skills just like any other subject that you can learn and you can develop. So anyone can learn technical skills in art. And on the other side of that is the creativity aspect. And I would encourage anyone, even if you don't consider yourself an artist or you don't, even if you don't think that that's a potential career option to try it, because even if you feel like you're not the best at it, it's still good to find an outlet for creative expression throughout your life and in high school, especially. I, I think that's so important for our students to hear, right? Because there's art and there's, you know, creativity and there's innovation in everything that we do now. And again, to, you know, kind of link that back to our Sage Oak core values. I mean, that's really a part of that growth mindset and that innovating and trying new things and making different versions and applying skills in a new way. When it comes to art and you're working with your students, do you, I mean, how do you really take them from someone who is like, okay, stick to your stage to really kind of developing their skills in order to get to something that is a little bit more technical, maybe a little bit more multi-dimensional. I mean, how do you walk someone through that process? It depends on the, on the subject. So last year I taught drawing, which is now taught by our fabulous new drawing teacher, Miss Fearing. But last year, I basically just broke it down step by step with lots of scaffolding and lots of feedback. So it was, we're learning facial proportions. You do a facial proportion diagram, you get feedback, and then you improve. And then we move into the next step and you do a more polished line drawing, you get feedback, and then you improve. And then we add shading, you get feedback, and then you improve. So just a lot of step by step. And then it depends on the subject. So photography, one, I like to balance the creativity with the technical skills. So in terms of photography, really keeping it open and creative so that students feel 
empowered to be expressive in their work. And then in photography, too, is when we amp up the technical skill in terms of digital photography and learning about DSLRs. But that answers I love the question. It. So much to unpack there, for sure. I mean, because every single skill, like you were saying, has different levels to it and different ways for students to, to grow and, and, and keep building on that skill. How does that work in our independent study learning environment, right? Are students communicating with you live on Zoom and you are giving feedback on the spot? Are students submitting their work and then receiving feedback and then taking some time to work on their projects? How does that work? So because it's independent study, obviously some students are attending live and some students are watching the recordings and working more at their own pace. So it depends. It's very individualized for students. I have students who attend live and they ask questions and they stay after class. We'll look at their work in class in photography too and do uh, critiques together. And then there are students who submit their work mainly through Canvas. I mean, everyone ultimately submits their work through Canvas. So I use the comment section to, you know, give very tailored specific feedback on, on what is working really well and areas for improvement. I love that. So now that the program has been around for um, a couple of years now, are you starting to see students progress through the program? Yeah, so that it's been rewarding to have some students in classes this year that I had in class last year and seeing just th their progress and their, and their development, especially in, in my photography class has been especially rewarding to see that growth in, in the body of work. So that's another great thing about this CT program is that students are developing a portfolio that they can then use for college applications and job applications down the line. And watching that portfolio grow and improve is very, very rewarding. I love that idea that they are accumulating this portfolio. So what are most of your students planning on doing? Are most of your students just taking this pathway because they enjoy art and want to do it while they're in high school? Or are you starting to see that some of them are really trying to move towards careers or college degrees in the area of art? Definitely a mixture. So there are some students that are taking, they're taking a la carte classes just to meet the VAPA requirement. And there are students who are, I am doing art after high school. So it's a mixture, and I do see students a lot in my Intro to Arts, Media, and Entertainment class this year who plan to pursue careers in arts, media, and entertainment a lot in the animation field and in the, in the film industry. So cool, and it'll be so exciting to see kind of where those students take these skills, right, and, and what they end up doing. We'll have to capture those on some of the alumni stories that we include at graduation time. I, I know. I hearing those, right? Yeah, I'm going to eat. The program is so young right now that we don't really have that um, like longitudinal data on students, but I look forward to seeing that for sure. Even in photo one right now, I have a senior who took photo one and then decided to pursue a degree or a certificate in photography. So that that was awesome to see that we're we're helping students find their path. That is so great. I love hearing that. Was this one of those students where you were like, oh, I know they're absolutely going to go into an art field? Or did this one surprise you? This was a surprise. Unsure about college, unsure about art, and then, you know, helping helping really narrow down and hone in on that path for, for graduation. I'm sure a lot of kids can relate to that, right? Like they just don't actually know what they want to do. And I think it speaks to the value of exploring, exploring some of these courses and these offerings that we are bringing to our high school students, because you never quite know what that one class is going to be that, you know, it, it sparks that joy in you, just like for your own self when you're or taking those classes and then you decided to take a teaching class and that combination really, um, you know, kind of came together for you. It's great that exactly. our students are starting to experience that. Even if you take something and you realize you don't like it, that's still a good thing because then you narrowed narrowed it down you're narrowing down even if you're like wasn't a huge fan of blank then it's still it's still a move in the right direction oh i couldn't agree more i mean i think half the game here is figuring out what you don't want to do that way you can really like double down on what you do want to do right and start to go in that direction so if students want to give this a try um you said they don't have to sign up for the whole pathway right they can just start with a class or two yeah, if you're interested in art at all, if you want to satisfy your BAPA requirement or get some elective credits, just start out with a class that sounds interesting to you and see if you like it. 
maybe you really like it and then you take another and then so you they take can another talk and, their then... and another and another and another, right? So start with your yeah. EA, tell them that you're interested in one of these classes. They can help get you enrolled in one of the classes. And then at what point do you have to make a commitment as to like, okay, yes, this is the pathway I'm going down. You're not, you're never really signing like a binding contract or anything. It's if you complete the number of courses and the level of courses that you need to earn the, or complete the pathway, then you complete the pathway. It's not, so it's more of like not, a checklist. Like if you end up completing all of these classes, then you've completed the CTE pathway. But if you only complete like one or two of these, that's fine. That just goes into your bank of electives. Is that right? Yep. Oh. Yes. And your EA can help you kind of hone in on that, see which classes you need to take in what order to complete the sequence. So great. Okay. All right. So for our parents that are listening out there and curious about enrolling students in uh, these courses, best course of action is to talk to your EA, let them know that you're interested. They can take a look at the course catalog for the semester and see what is coming up, uh, what sequence of classes that you should start with so that you can um, begin exploring these options. And then if you like it and you get on a roll, you can just keep picking more and eventually maybe find your student down the CTE art pathway, which is so great. So I love what you're doing. I think it's so awesome to hear how the program is just growing in its offerings. I love that we've added even more art teachers to Sage Oak this year. That's so great to see. I know that there's plans to continue to develop the program. So Congratulations on starting such an amazing program that our families and our students are benefiting from. It, it's really great. We appreciate your work that you've put into doing that. Thank you so much. I'm just happy to be teaching art. <laughs> well, I know our students are happy to be uh, enrolled in your classes. So uh, if you want to find more information on our classes, again, talk to your EA. And we will also put a link to the course catalog in the show notes so you can go ahead and take a sneak peek at some of those offerings. All right. Thanks, Tara. So great to talk to you. I appreciate you being here today. Thank you so much.